Hello, my name is Phil Shepherd. I've just finished the major project for my Masters in Illustration through the University of Hertfordshire. The finished product from this uh, project is this. It's called Doncaster Stories and it's a picture book targeted at the Key Stage 1 audience and their families. One of the first things you might notice is the bright, striking red used on the cover. I chose this to make the book stand out on the shelf in the shop. It's going so let's take a look inside the book. First off, the child can personalise the book, writing their name here. And here we have some drawings created by children from schools across Doncaster. More on that later. Then we arrive at the end papers. This is a map of Doncaster with a route that the child can follow and tick off every time they read. So we start off by explicitly saying, kids, you need to read regularly. Here we have QR codes. Now these link to videos online of the story being read in different languages. Příběhy jsou všude kolem nás. A tě posloucháte nebo vyprávíte. Jsou tu i pro vás. Doncaster has a high proportion of children with EAL, English as an additional language. So these link there and they can hear the story in Czech, Romanian, Polish and English. So it's very important in terms of inclusivity that we include as many different families in Doncaster as possible. Now we'll look at the main spreads of the book, starting with the line, you'll find stories everywhere, which represents a visual metaphor that can be found throughout the book. Um, for example, these tower blocks here, again, a play on the word stories, stories of a tower block, are photographed um, and included as part of this Doncaster landscape. Here you might notice the colour scheme of the book. I use lots and lots of oranges and yellows and blues throughout the book to aid cohesion as the reader goes through. So as part of developing the book, I did a lot of observational drawings in and around Doncaster Town Centre and at all the different locations in the book. But at this point, I wanted to tell you about something that brought my practice along uh, a great deal. And that is purchasing a new tablet at the beginning of this year, January 2020. Um, previous to having, having this, um, my work was very much hand-drawn, hand-painted and so on. Uh, I did use Photoshop and uh, InDesign and things like that, but this has really brought on my practice. So, uh, of course, I can work in layers, I can take photographs, import them in, um, and use the different brushes and um, pencil functions and so on to draw directly onto the tablet. So the work is very much a mixture of digitally created artwork, photography, and um, painted watercolours such as this. Here we have Doncaster Market. I spent a great deal of time in the market doing creative um, and observational drawings. Uh, here you see I've, I've uh, photographed a newspaper and a Doncaster newspaper as part of a story. So this, this spread, like some of the other spreads, tells a story in itself. Fruit Thief Mystery at this side. Oh, there's fruit gone missing from the market store. Here are our characters searching, being detectives, and at the end here, there's a pigeon who has stolen the fruit from the marketplace. So each spread has a lot of detail in there, might tell its own story. Really, it's a very simple text, but the spreads have lots of detail, which encourages the longevity of the text and really enjoyable for the target audience. Travel through time, have tea with the queen, be the greatest hero the world has ever seen. So, the uh, the text doesn't have any reference to it to Doncaster. Um, that is all brought in through the imagery. Yeah, so all of the detail, all of the Doncasterness of the book is brought in through the illustration. Mallard, the fastest steam train in the world, a record-breaking train was built in Doncaster. All kinds, and then Doncaster is famous for um, horse racing as well. So the horses here on a broomstick. Uh, chasing a golden snitch. A word on copyright in a moment. This is this this spread represents adventure. So each of the spreads, uh, I tried to make it represent a different genre of the children's stories. Of course, now you have ghost stories, horror stories, and things like that surrounding this famous Doncaster Castle. The hillside here, snow covered. Originally, it was green. Didn't work with the colour scheme. Changed it to blue. I did a bit of market research with the audience. They didn't really understand why is the hill blue? I thought it was 
tying with the spooky theme, but they didn't quite get it. Took out the blue and left it white. And then uh, this scene was created and it, it really made an impact on the scene. You'll notice here that characters are wearing gloves, hats and, and, and coats and so on. Um, I wanted to show passing of time through the book. So reading can occur at any time. Lots of sharing of books. Sharing is a very important uh, factor in reading for pleasure. So this is the winter scene. Turn over and you have a very, uh, a very warm scene here. Um, this is the genre here is fairy tales. Um, here the boys reading Alice in Wonderland. I wanted to uh, combat stereotypes in quite a subtle way. So he is reading a book that might stereotypically be a girl's book. Uh, this scene is um, from the Yorkshire Wildlife Park, um, a very famous tourist attraction in Doncaster. And you might recognise the style that I've adopted here and some of the positioning of the characters. It's based on um, Where the Wild Things Are, the famous children's book. And I've even copied kind of the, uh, the, 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 the charcoal work and the cross hatching in the characters. I did some research into um, copyright. So, of course, here I've copied that style because I really wanted to evoke that memory in the reader. Um, and I've used so, the Golden Snitch earlier and some others. Um, where possible, I've used kind of generic characters, generic stories. But sometimes I've been quite specific. Um, doing research into copyright, um, this is okay. This is exempt from copyright due to the uh, pastiche and the parody and the purpose of this piece. Uh, so this spread, um, this is quite a contemporary spread. Uh, this is uh, an old building that's just become, been converted into the Doncaster Library and Museum. So it's not even open yet, but I've included it in the book. Of course, library is so important for reading for pleasure. I really want to promote that. This is the Doncaster Theatre cast. Um, we've got some theatre characters at the front. So theatre is another way of telling stories. I wanted to include that as well, as well as promoting the new museum and library. If we look really closely, you can see some of the characters here. I have included different nationalities, um, different uh, abilities and so on in some of the secondary characters in the background to show the diversity uh, of our town and to make sure the book is inclusive. You'll find stories everywhere. You don't even have to leave your chair. So here's our characters. Now they're at home, relaxing on the sofa, reading the book. Um, in the background behind them are some of the characters from throughout the book. Now they're reading over the shoulders. Are they real characters? Are they imaginary? Those are the questions that the children might be asking themselves. You might notice on the floor, I've included pencil and some papers with things drawn on them. So that links with the next page. You'll find stories everywhere. You don't... Even in a dragon's lair. Even in your grandma's hair. Even in your underwear and so on. Now these are created by children from different Doncaster schools. I ran a competition when I was making the book for children to get in touch. Do they have a rhyme with you'll find stories everywhere and can they illustrate it? So the uh, relevance of the book is increased by, in by including real pictures from Doncaster children at the end of the story. Also, for interactivity, is another blank sheet of uh, paper here, and it says create your own rhyme and illustration. So the child who owns the book can then personalise it even more. We finish on a note from myself as the author and illustrator and a link to a QR code, which this time links to a video that takes the reader through all those little references in the book that refer to historical Doncaster detail. There's the Doncaster Free Press with Dolly Dog on the back, our cheeky Doncaster Rovers mascot. There's our famous fish market. Then the Doncaster History Trail from our high street is in the blue and orange smoke from the jetpacks. The jetpacks are made by famous Doncaster inventor Thomas Crapper, who invented the flush toilet. And here's the so uh, that's an extra bit that we wanted to view a cross curricular book um, linking with not just reading in English but history as well. Um, so. So there you go, there you have it, Doncaster Stories.